Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're here with another of our five minute histories. Happy Friday. And today, uh, thanks to a viewer, although I've been thinking about that term and viewer sounds too much like Nielsen ratings or something. Um, so thanks to a kind uh, Baltimore lover who sent in a suggestion. She suggested the Patterson Pagoda, Patterson Park Pagoda. And that's what we're gonna do today. Um, but I will have to just first say thanks to everybody who sent in suggestions. We have a backlog of about 60 or 70, uh, but Baltimore Heritage, we were founded in 1960 and we take the long view so we'll, we'll get to them uh, uh, so keep them coming um, thanks for your suggestions and of course thanks again for all those of you who are contributing um, or thinking of contributing they're making these possible um, uh, I will have to just say one more uh, preliminary thing is next week, I think we're going to do something radical. We're going to go outside and I'm going to leave you in suspense over that. But if all goes well, I have an idea and uh, stay tuned on Monday. All right. The uh, Patterson Park Pagoda was built in 1892. Uh, but before we get there, let's talk a little bit about the park itself. It was uh, dedicated in uh, 1827, I believe, um, 1820s, uh, by a gift from a gentleman named William Patterson. Um, Patterson was born in Ireland in the 1750s, came to Baltimore, apparently was a gun runner for the revolutionaries in the Revolutionary War, um, and then did exceedingly well in Baltimore. He was a founder of the b &O Railroad. He was the first president of the Bank of Maryland, um, and he was a founder of the Canton Company. If you remember from a prior video, that was Peter Cooper and the Tom Thumb, the first real viable steam locomotive uh, in the country. So he did well. He was also a successful merchant. Um, incidentally, he had three children, two sons and a daughter. One son married into the Caton family, the Catonsville, if you know that. Another son married into Sam Smith's family. Um, Smith, if you recall, was the uh, head of the defense of Baltimore in the War, War of 1812, um, in the Battle of Baltimore in 1814, obviously successful. Um, and then the daughter was named Elizabeth, and we know her today as Betsy Patterson, uh, who married Jerome Bonaparte, Napoleon's brother. That's a whole other saga in and of itself. Um, but in the 1820s, Patterson gives uh, about five acres uh, for a walk uh, and a public walk. And that makes it Baltimore's oldest park. This was the first time anybody had uh, given over land for public recreation. Um, and it was the first time Baltimore had set aside land for public recreation, um, which is something that surprised me. I probably would have guessed Druid Hill Park, but nope, it's Patterson Park is our oldest park. Um, and things go on pretty well until the 1860s when Baltimore City buys another 30 acres. So greatly expanding the park, uh, making it uh, a, a wonderful expanse of greenery. It, Civil War happens. The park becomes a union encampment and hospital. Um, and they more or less take over the area where the pagoda is today. The pagoda isn't there yet. We're still in the 1860s. Um, uh, and then over the next, uh, say, 40 years or so, Baltimore City expands the park again and again. Uh, the last the last one was in 1913. I believe this was the last expansion. And it followed plans by the landscape architecture firm of Frederick Law Olmsted. So it was sort of in the romantic uh, design where you had winding paths through, through groves of trees and past lakes. And that's in fact what Patterson Park looks like today even. Um, uh, and that was doing really well also. Uh, people were coming uh, and the park uh, was doing well. Um, the Pagoda 1892 uh, was built, uh, designed by a gentleman named Charles Latrobe. He was the park superintendent um, he was not an architect, but he did get uh, maybe a wee bit of help uh, by a gentleman named George Frederick, who was an architect and who designed City Hall, incidentally. Uh, but Latrobe was fascinated by the East. Um, some of the other things that you can see that he designed in his day as park superintendent, um, if you know the Moorish Tower, uh, that's what it's called. It's that crazy little thing on the, what is it, the southeast corner of Druid Hill Park, right by the lake. If you're driving up or down I-83, uh, you can see it sitting there. That's uh, a little folly. It doesn't have a super real purpose. It's just there to kind of be neat to look at. Um, that's uh, that's Latrobe's. And he designed a number of pavilions in Druid Hill Park, including one called the Chinese Pavilion, which obviously has uh, takes its uh, design from the east. Um, and originally, the pagoda was not called the pagoda. It was called the observatory. Um, and he, uh, he thought it fit in with the Victoria era design standards of the day, um, that it would be a place where people could go up and take, uh, take in gorgeous scenery. And that's true. But for obvious reasons, pretty quickly, it became known as the Patterson Park Pagoda. Um, and it, uh, it does well all the way up through the 1950s, um, when through lack of maintenance and even vandalism, um, it closes. And 
over the next 30 or 40 years, uh, it gets a little bit of maintenance, it, it opens up for a while, then it closes down, it gets a little bit of maintenance, opens up, and then closes down. Um, and in fact, somewhere in that period, there was a proposal to demolish the pagoda altogether. It was just too much of a hassle. But thank goodness, uh, in the, in the 1990s, uh, I was about to say 1890s, not 1890s, in the 1990s, um, the Friends of Patterson Park, a wonderful group. Uh, if you want to know a group that's changed not just the park, but an entire quadrant of the city, really, with their wonderful efforts. Um, Patterson Park, uh, Friends of Patterson Park, uh, spearhead a master plan uh, that includes restoring the pagoda. And in 1998, uh, the plan is adopted. And in 2002, uh, with the generous contributions of the city and the state, uh, the pagoda is restored, uh, basically using historic preservation um, as the corner cornerstone to revitalize uh, revitalize the park and its surrounding neighborhoods. To, I'm going to end on two other quick notes. Um, right adjacent to the pagoda are uh, a, a row of cannons and a statue. The row of cannons, uh, were, they were both put there in 1914 at the centennial, a celebration of the centennial of the Battle of Baltimore, 100 years before that. And the cannons are ones, uh, are historic cannons. Um, certainly some of them would have been used uh, to defend the city in the war, and they were put there as a commemoration of the battle. And the, the statue is called the Children's Statue, and it was, it was put there in 1914 also. Um, and it was uh, by school children collecting pennies to pay for its erection. And on that statue, if you take a look, it's, uh, it's two school kids holding a scroll that commemorates the soldiers who defended the city in the War of 1812. So if you're out and about, I encourage you to go take a look. Uh, I can't go up in the pagoda yet. Uh, hopefully soon we will be able to. Um, but just go take a look at the statue in the pagoda and the cannons um, and think about William Patterson and then Baltimore City's and the Friends of Patterson Park's effort to restore this wonderful, wonderful park. Thanks so much and we'll see you Monday.